Four R to the E K to the S. Rhythmatic Eternal King Supreme. Shout out to Breaking Records Radio. Doing a thing. We doing our thing over here. Things is in the building. <laughs> Hey yo, hey yo, it's your boy Monster Man Rocco. It's your boy Swagger Rock. This is Snack the Ripper. Hey, King, you have to go to Don't Know. This is Master Ace. You are not rocking with the best. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records, man. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records. Breaking Records. Breaking Records Radio. Let's go. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records, man. Radio is like the place to be. I don't know. Fuck strange music, man. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out, it's Breaking Records Radio and the place to be. It's your host, Maloney, and I got a very, very, very special guest on the phone with me right now, man. This guy's an underground legend. Uh, you know, just he's been in the game for years, man. And If you're a fan of underground hip-hop, you definitely know who this man is. We got R.E.K.S. Rex on the phone with us, man. How are you doing? Peace, peace. Thanks for having me. I'm doing well, brother. Yeah, man, you know, you got... You got mad years in this game, man. Um, the first time I became familiar with you actually was um, back in 2001 when you did uh, Along Came the Chosen. And uh, that Final Four joint you got. That Like, I love that joint, man. Uh, which joint was it? I'm sorry, you broke up. Oh, my bad. Uh, the Final Four joint with Young Z, Pace One, Shabam. Oh, dope. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was a dope record. Like, just being able to, like, um, you know, collect... Uh, connect and collect collect um, lyrical uh, prowess with cats all over like from New York, New Jersey, Virginia and of course Boston uh, Mass in general. It was dope. How did that track all come together? Like, because uh, back in those days that's before you could email each other verses and shit so you guys, were you guys all in the studio together when you made that joint? So it, it was it's funny like we did more linking up together. Um, I didn't all of us weren't uh, together, but we actually we we drove down to VA. Yeah. The night before we 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 did the thing with um, Danger Mouse and Lonnie B, and um, you know we linked up. We linked up with uh, with uh, J Live. J Live came up to our studio up in uh, Massachusetts. Linked up with him, and um, we actually did um, have um, uh, the other individuals. Uh, Send their, send their verses in. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, Young V Pace One and uh, Shabam Sadiq, they um, they all sent their verses in. And Shout out to Shabam, that's my that's my guy to this day, man. Word, man, he's got a new project coming out with uh, J Fifty Seven too, doesn't he? Or or did it already drop? I'm not sure if it dropped. Like I've been kind of out of the out of the mix on what's what's going on. Yeah, I seen um, I seen it getting promoted though. I'm not sure if it dropped yet, but. Yeah, man. Yeah, but up to that, I rock with J57. I rock with uh, uh, Shabam. So definitely go pick up their new work. Yeah, man. You got a lot of work with J57, too. He's produced uh, quite a handful of joints for you. Yeah, we have, we got a couple of things uh, brewing out there. You know what I'm saying? One of my favorites is a record off my, my album, The Greatest X. Uh, the double double disc I dropped uh, back in 2016 on songs called Intuition. Yeah, that's a dope joint. And uh, actually, I, th th that's one thing I wanted to ask about too, like with that album. Because um, you, you kind of took almost a little bit of a brief hiatus before that album, didn't you? I did. Yeah. Um, I took a little break. Um, I was I was getting a lot of recording in. Um, you know, it was me going back because I, I kind of flip-flopped between the product, the projects where I was doing one-offs with like one producer. Yeah. Uh, so I had the joint with, uh, I had the full album with Static Selector, then I had the full album with Mnemonics, um, I had the full, uh, full album with, uh, with, uh, Hazardous Sounds, and so I was, I, w I wanted to take a little break so I can go back to that other recipe, because prior to those three projects was, the last album was the Rex album. Yeah. You know, and, and, and so I wanted to, I wanted to go back to that kind of energy and atmosphere. Um, well, actually, I did do in between those kind of um, uh, the Revolution cocktail, which was um, you know self released and, and, and uh, a mixture of different producers and what have you. Yeah, but it wasn't it wasn't quite like the um, it wasn't quite like those ones where um, I get you know classic production um, from cats like the Alchemist and Evidence and Not and Large Professor. 
boxing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man, you know, you yeah, right. Is that, is that why you ended up doing a double album too? Because like, like was that uh, was that intentional or was it just the fact that you kind of, you were recording all these songs and they all like, you know, and it had been a minute. So you decided to put them all out as one collective or like, did you have a, a different idea going into it originally? Uh, I originally, I originally was, was not planning for a double album. Um, and we just started building up. Uh, to be honest, I recorded maybe like 70 to 75 songs for that, for that project. I, I was just like, I was recording so many records at that period in time. And it was just like, and specifically with that project in mind. And so I, I have so much material that didn't make the great effects, you know? Yeah. Uh, that, you know, it, it's just there, you know? And, and it was like, it was just, an, it was an idea that became a double disc just based off the fact that for the sheer volume of like um, material that I had, uh, it was quantity, but I knew it was quality. And yeah. So I was like, why not do do that? You know, uh, never never had uh, entertained doing something like that. And a lot of times when cats do the double disc album, it's like the, it's a it's a real risky risky um, approach. Yeah. Because you know the majority of the time those albums don't really pan, uh, pan out too well. But uh, I wanted to take on that challenge, and I was I was happy with the result. And was that the first album you put out under your new label that you started? It wasn't. Um, that was the, the uh, first one when I started to, like, well, so, like, you know, I was already, like, kind of, like, thinking outside of the, outside of the, um, the mode of, of individuals I was working with, like, so... Uh, static select always, always going to be fam and the show off fam is always going to be fam but um, I was, we were kind of moving in different creative directions so um, you know at the, at the time of actually revolutionary is when like we kind of started to do our different things okay yeah uh, I wanted to go a little more political like with my records I've always had political records and social con socially conscious but uh, my records were living uh, were, were um, leaning further along that line that line and scope. So, uh, you know, we just had creative differences on the on, on, on the way we were going to approach things, and and it led to that. And um, you know, that that's around the time where I started to do my own thing. But the, the the imprint, the actual first release was this last record I put out called Order and Chaos with Short Fuse. Okay, so that was the first official one. Yeah, because I yeah, that was the first official on BMGI. Yeah, because I was curious why you were, you left Show Off, because I knew there obviously wasn't any bad blood, because you guys continue to work together to this day, so I was always kind of curious why that uh, why that happened. I think it was around that time, if I'm not mistaken, so that's, yeah, so I was curious about that. Was just, it? Yeah, like I said, creative, creative differences and, like, just ideas and, and views that, that, you know, kind of don't you know, coincide consistently across, like, the scope of, a, of an album. Yeah. Whereas, you know, like, we, we, we put out some magnificent records, I feel, together. And, and you know, those those are things that we can, like, you know, hold on forever, part of our legacy. Um, and, you know, since then, you know, Static has consistently um, churned out, like, phenomenal work. Uh, you know, he's the, like, hardest working cat out there. And, and you know, I just have made it, made it my... Um, my life's goal to like you know do my due diligence about the, the, the products I put out and, and and the outcome you know yeah for sure and like yeah and, and what you said about statics true man like ever since I first heard of you guys and what probably like when did I get really privy to you guys like I mean I, I've been familiar with you since um you know since I first heard final four and then I think like you know when you really came you you really resurged uh probably Ah, 2009, 2010 is really when you resurged, like, to me, and, like, with static and terminology, all you guys kind of, like, came, like, that whole, you know, that whole Boston wave kind of came in at once, and, like, you know, that was, like, the early days of YouTube, I was always just looking for good underground hip-hop, I was sick of the mainstream shit, like, I was just looking for some good quality shit, and you guys really filled that void at that time, um, like, how did you, how did you guys originally kind of link up, like, you and static? Uh, I met Static, um, he was doing a showcase, like, very early on, like, you know, super young, young, um, period, uh, he was doing, like, a, a showcase up in Exeter, and, um, 
believe it was Exeter, New Hampshire, and he wanted to he wanted to actually get a, a younger rapper um, that used to go by uh, Elder Head Toucher. I don't know if, uh, if you're familiar, familiar with Elder Head Toucher, but super dope MC um, for, for Massachusetts. We wanted to really work with him. And uh, my manager at the time, uh, Shea Boogs, uh, David Timkins, uh, David Timkin, uh had a link to him, but he was like, if you're going to get uh, Elder Head Touch, I need you to put on my other artist, Rex. And so that's that's how I got on that showcase, and that's how Static got you know, privy to me. Um, and Static really wasn't doing anything. He was just like a local kid putting a showcase together. Yeah. But like from that, we linked up. And, you know, I, I had um, some things brewing on, on, on my end, you know, following our, our linking up. Uh, I started doing, it was just like a quick little um, spell of me just doing nonstop battles. And, and uh, I, was, I was on the Liverpool Lounge tour and I was just doing so many different things. And uh, he, was, he was coming along and DJing for me. Oh, wow, eh? That's crazy. That's just how things started growing. That's crazy. So how, how was like I didn't even know that you were on the Lyricist Lounge tour. That's no, it crazy. wasn't the full tour. It wasn't the full tour. Like we didn't do like you know all the all the dates, but like we did the the um the local um date. Um, so we did we did um we did that, and and from that like he he was um like DJing for me. I was doing you know opening up for everyone from like you know De La Soul to Red and Mess and. You know, go stay. Like we were open up for everyone. Yeah, that's and um, uh, you know, Static just became a part of uh, part of the team. That's crazy. You know? That's and, crazy. Was he uh? It became, it, sorry. No, go ahead. It, it's fine. I was just saying, like he 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 became my my DJ at that time and period. Ah, oh, that's crazy, man. And was uh like was he rocking with Term back then too, or did Term come into the picture later on after that? Term, term came in the picture a little bit after that. Yeah. Um, you know, Term started to, um, you know, gain some notoriety messing with Detonator and um, uh, putting out his, um, you know, own personal releases uh, very early on. Um, he had the the street with uh, Easy Money, who was then Ed Rock, and he was doing he was doing his own thing. But like we're all from the same like environment, you know, like we're all uh, cats from the Barnes area. And you know, even though Static moved out and, and Term moved out, it doesn't matter. Like, we're all, and I moved out. We all moved out of Lawrence, but like we're all from that same kind of like uh, location. Yeah. And so the the, the 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 connection was there very early on for all of us. We all just met at different times, and I'm I'm a bit older than them, obviously. So I was doing my thing a little bit uh, before them with the Along Came the Chosen album, as you mentioned. Um, but regardless, you know, term term really really um, flew off when he um, got the unsigned hype, and you know he he got the primo record to watch how it go down, and that that kind of changed a lot for like our neighborhood, you know. And so it was only it was only a matter of time before it, uh, individuals as a as a whole joined forces because we from the same like you know uh, cloth and from the same location. Yeah, man, that's uh, that watch I would go down. That's the first joint I ever heard by terminology, and that that shit. Super classic. Oh my god, that shit blew my mind, man. You know, like the way he rapped on that shit, and just you know, Primo will always bring the best out of somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah, between Static and Term, both like uh, two of the hardest working. Um, you know, it, it's amazing that they come from my neighborhood. Uh, and shout out to them. They got you know what I'm saying the new project coming, the quarantine with all that's going on. They got the new record coming. Uh, 420, you know. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's dope, man. Like, you guys, you know, that's another thing, too. It's like the the whole Massachusetts history. It's like, you know, we're, we're familiar with a lot of you guys that come from there, but it's like the history, you know, like, is very relatively unknown to us. You know what I mean? To us, you know, from the outside looking in, it's just like, oh, all these guys, like, grew up together and rocked together. But, you know, like, if I, like um, I heard you say in an interview, like, you first met Term because he paid you for a feature, right? Facts like um, term, and, term and Easy. Even though Easy didn't want to pay me for the feature, Term knew was uh, what was the uh, um, approach that that he needed to do. He was always like, 
he was always one of the sharpest cats in the room, you know, like, when it came to, like, what, what you need to do business-wise to, like, try to, like, you know, get yourself ahead. And he just knew there was an opportunity. I had my name buzzing around the city for a while. And he was like, yo, he, there's a kid from my neighborhood, Rex, you know, I'm, I was hot at the time. So he was like, yo, let's, let's throw him a couple bills. I think, I believe it was something like that. It wasn't anything crazy. And, uh, and like, you know, it was just a respect thing. Yeah. And... And it ended up ended up becoming a a, a, um, a viable relationship. Although term like you know a, after <laughs> after I came back in the game because you know I did that hiatus, he was like, you know what, you know you're gonna be paying me for a feature. So, you know, he didn't get no, he ain't get no payment for no feature though. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. He, he didn't let, let it be known because he was buzzing. That's hilarious, he was, man. He, he was, when term, term was buzzing, Term was the hottest thing out of, out of hometown at that time. So, yeah, I actually. You know, shout out to Term, man. That's my broski. Yeah, man. He's he's incredible. And I actually, like, you know, around that time, um, you know, once again, this is from the outside looking in, just seeing what I can see. But I, I thought there was going to be, like, a Terminology and Premiere album because he had that joint, you know, they, they hit him with the watch that would go down. Then you had the. Um, Oh, so amazing! And then the, this is how we rock, and it was just consistent. Yep. And then you were coming out with the multiple preem joints too. I was like, man, what's going over there in Boston, man? Like, yeah, we had we had some Primo with Primo. We had some Primo. Primo was rocking with 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 Massachusetts Law Town specifically, and we gotta say that too because we Lawrence rappers. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times people we'll call us Boston rappers, but we from Lawrence, Massachusetts. Okay, you know? and we got mass love for Boston. We got mad love for Boston, but those are two totally different neighborhoods. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And um, I don't have a problem with people distinguishing, I, I mean, calling me a Boston rapper because um, I, I did make uh, make uh, my name and, and get a lot of my breaks in Boston. But, um, yeah, you know, we started off in Lawrence, and that's, that's always going to be like home first. Yeah. And then, how, like, how, what the, what is the DJ Premier connection with you guys? Because you guys, like, you know, you and Preem have, at, what, at least three records together. Um, you know, Term and Preem. Uh, I, got, I, got, I got three, uh, four records with Primo. Yeah, four records with Primo. Yeah. Um, and then Term, Term has, Term has countless. Like, Term probably has an album worth <laughs> of Primo records. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it's just, like, it, that, that connection started with Static, like, uh, a relationship that that happened through Static being an intern at, like, my own band, management company, Metro Concepts. Uh, Static had, you know, he had, he had I, I believe the story goes that Static, um, Static had um, helped Prima with some stuff uh, in the city. Like, he I might have lost something or something of that nature. Ah. And, Static helped them out, and then they linked up, and they became homies. I mean, I, I may be wrong about the like the nuances of how they how they um how they first interacted, but like the relationship grew, and they they became good homies. And from there, Static would bring um bring us around to come like sit in on sessions, and you know we'd be there and Primo talking about old sessions with Nas and Jay Z and Biggie, and like you know just be soaking up uh. D&D, you know what I'm saying, soaking up, like, headquarters, like, the, the whole idea, whole, um, uh, energy of that, that environment, and, um, and from there, you know, like, for me, at least, um, I was putting out the gray hairs album at the time, and, um, you know, we were just about done finishing, wrapping up, and then, you know, we were playing records for Primo as we were going along, and, um, you know, Primo was like, yo, keep playing me new stuff. And then out of nowhere, he was just like, yo, I'd like to do something for you. Say word, eh? Yeah. That's um, crazy. Yeah. Yo, that's like that's like one of the highest honors as an MC you can get, man. It's like, to me, yeah. Premier's my favorite producer, so you know, but it's like... Like, you know, a lot of people sought after Prem, but like, for, to just be with Prem and him to be like... Like, your, your album's almost done, and him be like, yo, yo, like, I'd like to put something on this. It's like, yeah, that's crazy, man. That's such an honor. Yeah, that was phenomenal. Like, yeah, and, and I mean, that obviously came to Say Goodnight, which kind of catapulted that album to the other level, you know, which brought it over over the top. You know, and having, having the ability to pull that, that primo uh, card out the, out the deck, that's like that ace. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, wherever you go in the world, 
can always pull out that card and be like, yo, you did this record with Primo. Coming up as a, as a youth, I was like, you know, like, I'm driving through the neighborhood with my homies. Even younger, like, it would be me and Spock driving in the whip. But prior to that, it would be like, you know, me just rapping in the mirror. And like, being like, oh, yo, I, I can't wait for the day where I'm like rapping on a Primo beat. Yeah. You know, a P. Rock beat or a large pro beat. You know, all the, all the great. And then there you go, like, you know, uh, 10, 10 to 15 years later, you know, that's exactly what happened. And you worked with like, all of them. Coming from the neighborhood I came from, to be able to rock with like some of the legendary acts that I worked with. That's incredible, man. What was like? What was uh, when you guys did say goodnight? Were, like, were you in D and D with him? Like, did you guys do that set? Like, do that session together, or did he just link you the beat and you went and worked on with it on your own? Originally, I did the record at Static Studio. Yeah, uh, in his old studio in Brooklyn, but. Uh, the original version of the record, I was dissing too many rappers. <laughs> oh, word! Yeah, the original of Say Goodnight, on the original of Say Goodnight, I'm name dropping like a bunch of rappers. Like, I was in my, I was in my youthful bag and I was like my arrogant, uh, young Rex ready to like take over, take off anybody's neck. And, like, <laughs> it's a rapper I didn't like expect. And so, like, I was rapping like that on Primo Records of Say Goodnight and then like, you know, um, you know, I got some, like, I got some little inf information from some people that, like, you know, maybe you might want to, like, pipe, pipe down on some of the, like, things you're saying. And, like, you know, I just I just wanted to play a little ball so I could, like, you know, put out this record and not, not ruffle any feathers. So, yeah. you know, we brought it to where we needed to bring it to. And then, like, you know, uh, we were able to put out a classic record nonetheless. But when I do shows, I always say the name. So it's all love. Oh, do you? Damn. I gotta yeah, see a yeah, rec show. Perform, when I perform, I always drop the name. Ah, I gotta see a rec show, man. You gotta come up to Toronto. <laughs> so, like, next time, next time you're talking to one of the promoters in your Toronto area, though they can hit me up just the same way you hit me up on Ari King, uh, Wrecking Supreme at gmail.com. You can have the promoters hit me up, and I'll be, once all this nonsense, you know, falls over, yep. you know, I'll be coming out to Toronto and I'll come rock with you. All right, dope, man, dope. And, uh, and you I'll know, bring the queen, and we'll do some like we'll do some vegan cooking out there. We'll do all that. Actually, I wanted to ask you about that too, but um, before I do get into that though, because I've seen you promoting that on your Instagram and stuff, but um, just kind of in correlation to what you're saying, uh, with the original say goodnight, I was actually curious too, because on your joint this or that, you kind of do say some pretty um. So you, you do call some people out on that too, and I was curious, did you ever get like any backlash for some of the things you said on this or that about certain people? Like, did anybody's people ever reach out to you? Like, yo, what the fuck's with this? Or like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna throw nobody, I'm not gonna throw nobody came under the bus or anything like that because like nobody's ever to me or anything like that. Yeah. But um, I've had people didn't want to really like kind of rock with me, I guess, because like I was, I was going at certain individuals or what have you. Which, you know, I can respect, you know what I mean? Like, if you got relationships that, like, kind of, like, coincide with the people that I don't really rock with, then, like, I understand why you would want to protect their name and what have you. But I was young, and I didn't really care. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I wanted to say what I had to say, and I wanted to get off my chest how I felt. And, you know what I'm saying? I was in, I was in a specific bag. So, like, I don't I don't have any regrets about it, you know, where I am, at, I, I am now. I allow everybody's um, creative juices and energy to flow how they flow. But at that time, in space, that's where I was as a lyricist. If I didn't like what you were doing, if I didn't think you were representing hip-hop in the right uh, tone, then I was speaking my piece. Yeah. And, and, and it was a static beat, so like, I was like, yo, I'm going to spit people's names on this. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, like, yeah, in those days, man, you were like, you're almost like, a, you're like a pit bull off the leash, yeah, man. Going at people's yeah, man, I remember watching Rex videos, and I was like, yo, like, you just had that, like, just such raw, natural aggression. I was like, this is not a dude I'd want to, like, you know, piss off on a dark street some night. You know what I mean? I feel like this dude will rip my head off. Oh, like, uh, <laughs> well, I hope, I hope my zen now, all of that kind of, like, point, but yeah, like, I've gotten that from a lot of people, like, yo, I was a bit aggressive. Yeah, yeah, but it translated into the music very well, though. You know what I mean? Like that, the the delivery on joints like that, this or that. You know, say good night. Like it's just like you know, it's just there's just something about that raw energy that just translate, and you know, that that on the other end is the listener. You know, just reverberates with you. You know what I mean? Like it's like 
understand. It's the same reason you like, you know, I love MOP and like, you know what I mean? It just it had that raw aggression to it, you know? I love that though. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, speaking of, like, some of the tracks on Grey Hairs and stuff, too, um, you mentioned earlier, too, and I was curious about, like, what, what was the per um, reason for the hiatus between doing, like, Reckless and Grey Hairs? Well, um, I got married. Um, okay. And then, uh, after that, I was kind of in a different mind frame. Yeah. In terms of where my life was going, like, what I, like, I was very young, so, like, you know, I got married, I got married young, and then I, like, made um, a choice, a conscious choice that, like, yo, you know, maybe, uh, I wasn't making a lot of money off of music at that time, you know, it was, it was, it wasn't paying the bills the way it does now, so, um, I had to, like, make a choice, you know, yeah. I had to decide to, like, am I going to do the 9 to 5 wave, or, and, 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 and more so because I didn't truly understand, I didn't really have any guidance, per se. Yeah. Individuals that are gonna like, show me the path, so I kind of uh, threw what I could at the wall, and you know I just made a made a conscious decision that like you know I I, I was like I'm gonna retire from rap music, and if anyone really knew uh, knew of me for me to even be, um, consider myself a retired rapper, but um you know after that after that period I was like you know I'm gonna take that hiatus and I'm gonna stop I was gonna stop music I was gonna retire. Uh, and I was just gonna like I was gonna go into I was doing insurance claims at the time. Oh wow! And I was like, that's what I was gonna do. I was gonna like I was gonna go into insurance. And so uh, I laugh now because I mean that's that's insane. I mean, yeah, that's not something that that um, would have been fulfilling to me. And um, I'm so happy that uh, a few years uh, down the road I moved to Miami. Well, the Miami area, I was in uh, actually Broward County and uh, Miramar. And uh, my homie Static Selecta uh, was down visiting with my homie Terminology. And my brother Static Selecta was just starting a new imprint called Show Off Records. Oh, wow. And he was like, listen, bro. He was like, listen, bro, I really need you to come back, drop an album, and, you know, see if it works. If it works for you, cool. If it doesn't, you know, just call it quick. And that was how Grey Hairs came. Say word, eh? Yeah. That's crazy. Yep, that's exactly what happened. That's amazing, yo. So, you know, yo, like, so salute to fucking Static Selector then for, you know, really putting the putting the bug back in your ear and, you know, because that, that's a classic album right there, you know what I mean? And, like, to think, like... That's one thing I love about learning about hip hop history, man. Is like you know, there's a there's a lot of times there's these little things that happen, and it's like some of these classic albums or certain things in history, like were like a hair away from never happening. It's like I when I, I interviewed Master Ace, he said, um, you know, right before they recorded, um, he recorded the first album uh, with Cold Chillin'. His mom got a job offer to move them to like Atlanta or something, and like he made the conscious decision to stay. But, like, he was, like, literally, he, like, the decision was almost made to, to move. And if he would have moved, like, wow. hip-hop would have never had Master Ace. You know what I mean? Like. Wow, that's, that's incredible. Like, it's crazy, though. I love just learning these little, you know, the little things. It's like, and but, you know, the more and more I talk to people, I find sometimes, you know, like, there's a lot of classic historical artists or albums or pieces of hip-hop history that just almost wouldn't have happened if it was just for one little thing. You know what I mean? Right. If you, I mean, if you just think about the idea of creatives in general, like you know, there are so with all these stories that you're talking about. Think about all the stories of individuals that, that it just didn't happen. Yeah. Like the most phenomenal cats, like who we, we must have missed out on. You know, who are like some of the greatest creators? Because I know, I know homies around the way who are like some of the best lyricists that that ne no one ever heard about. When I like, when I put on my album, I say I'm the greatest unknown. There's so many cats. I'm like, man, you're the greatest. Unknown. You know what I'm saying? No, that's a fact. There's, that so, many, there's so many, there's so many MCs, producers, and artists out there uh, who are like that. That's why every time I talk to the youth, I talk to them how about how important it is for them to. You know, get their information out there. Speak to the people because your message is viable. It's important, and like your voice is so instrumental to this culture that, unlike any other genre out there, you feel me? Yeah. Like this, like we just have a relatable 
genre that has connected people worldwide in a way that's unfathomable in any other genre. Yeah, man, it's true, and it's like, and exactly what you said is a fact, like, some of the best rappers I've ever known, like, and I'm not even just talking about, like, you know, that I know personally, but, like, some of the best people I've ever heard rap in my life are dudes that I know personally, but they just never really took that push to take it seriously, or, like, you know what I mean, or they, like, I, I felt, a lot of them actually felt, felt, felt kind of corny. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, you're phenomenal. They're like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna be a rapper though. It's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do insurance claims or some shit. You know what I mean? You're like, dude, exactly. it's, it's like you got. Exactly. They put the route that I laughed at, and they laughed, they laughed at what I was like. I chose. Yeah. You know. So yeah, you know, there's, there's, that that's exactly right what you just said. Yeah, it's crazy, man. You know, but. You know, so it's salute to the people like yourself who do persevere, and you know, because it's not easy being an independent artist, an underground artist, and having to persevere through the bullshit for years before people actually do recognize and know the name. Like people, people don't realize the years of groundwork it takes to get to that level where you have that one single that just connects or goes or you know gets you familiar with the with the masses. So it's like, you know, I commend you and so many, you know. Everybody else that's in a similar position, uh, like you know, uh, in the underground, like to 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 put all that work in, and you know, it, it's not an easy task. And people look at you, you know, look at face level when they're introduced to you, but they don't see the years of work that go in behind it. You know what I mean? That's dope of you to say, brother, and 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 absolutely true. You know, absolutely true. Yeah, man, and um, you know, so like speaking actually of the years of groundwork and stuff too, I, I, there's one thing I, I did want to ask about too that kind of connects with um, along came the chosen album, but um, I noticed that you had Ed OG on there too, so you've been rocking with Ed OG since like day one. I was just kind of curious how um that connection all started. Uh, yeah, so Ed OG was on my first album, but I was definitely not rocking with Ed OG. <laughs> so. I loved Ed O.G. as an artist, right? Yeah. But Ed O.G. couldn't stand me. Really? <laughs> yeah, Ed O.G. <laughs> couldn't stand me because, like, we had the same management yeah. at, um, called Metro Concepts, as I mentioned before. Yeah. Uh, Static used to, like, you know, do flyers or whatever for them, right? And I was this young, arrogant, like, um, uh, almost 20-year-old from, like, you know, Lawrence, Massachusetts, not even from Boston area, coming out there, and I always walked into the offices as if I owned it. And Ed OG was obviously the biggest thing in Boston. Yeah. And I would walk in there as if, like, I, I ran everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ed OG could not stand it. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, like, it's funny because years later, Ed OG and I went on our first tour together. It's like, I believe it was 2012. Yeah. We went on our first tour. And Ed O's my brother. You know what I'm saying? He's like, He's like obviously super legendary status. Has done like phenomenal things in his career. Yeah, and he's one of the most humble dudes to ever kick it with and and to build with. And he sat with me, and we he just told me countless countless stories, and that was just one of them. He was like, "Man, when I met you, I couldn't stand you." <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. He was like, "Yo, you come up in this office like you ran everything." <laughs> like so, like yo, we, we just we just hit it off really well. Like the first time we really kicked it. Yeah, but that. Actually, it's uh, funny you say that too, because I noticed he wasn't on Reckless, and so like there was like a gap where he wasn't on, uh, you know, uh, your albums or anything. But I just, you know, I always just assumed that was yeah. actually like on your end. I had no idea. <laughs> like it was like <laughs> yeah, the organic stuff came later, like yeah. our later career. Because if you think about it, I've never been on his album for later. Yeah, you know what I mean. He wasn't throwing me on on any of his albums, and <laughs> he was on my first album, and then he wasn't on my album again until. I want to say, um, 2016. Yeah, yeah, it was a little bit down the road. Yeah, I don't think he was on anything prior to that. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't on anything prior to that. And so I believe Great, I, I, I believe Great Effects was the first album of mine that he saw. Man, did you know before you guys went on tour we together? We were together around that 2000, 2012 time period. Yeah. But that was the creation of records. 
that was the you know build up of um, records that were to come. Like that was the greatest X like building period. Yeah. Did you know, when before you guys went on tour too? Did you know that like he couldn't stand you prior to that, or like did, did he no, told you I that? Didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know that. <laughs> he, 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 he made sure I knew immediately. <laughs> That's like, fucking let's hilarious. Get this out the way. Let me let you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my brother right there. But like, yo, I'm glad he. I'm glad he approached us the way he did, and that he's just like, like I said, one of the coolest, most down to earth, like dudes that you're gonna meet. Who's done so much? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, Ed O.G.'s such a legend, like, you know, he... He's a legend with a capital L, yeah. yeah. and you know, like, and just everything from, you know, Ed O.G. and the Bulldogs all the way up to when he puts new music out now, like, he just consistently dope. Like, to be that consistently dope and stay true to your roots for that many years and be able to like, carry your career like that, like, you know, it's just so commendable, man. Like, I... Ed OG is one of the vets that I got such heavy respect for that I don't think he, he gets the props he deserves just in hip-hop as a whole. Well, it's tough, you know, because hip-hop, like, there's so much talent, you know what I mean? It's just like it's oversaturated with phenomenal, phenomenalness, you know? Yeah. Uh, and for, the, for, for, all the, for all the bickering and complaining that we as, you know, fans and... Um, and followers of the genre do like if you really want dope consistent incredible music you have it you know what i'm saying yeah like, you can just you can go into your roller deck of dopeness and like you can you can be stuck on an island and and never have to worry as long as you got like you know some of the classics you know that's a fact man you know and it's like a lot of people talk about how hip-hop nowadays is dead or, you know, the lyricism's not there, or the classic sound's not there, and it's like, well, actually, everything is as readily available to you right now as it's ever been. Like, like you know, in 98, if you felt like the shiny suit era was taken over, and you wanted to get some good underground hip-hop, like, you had to go to a mom-and-pop shop and go buy, like, an underground, independent label record. You know, you had to search for it. Like, all you have to do now is just know what the fuck you're looking for. You know what I mean? It's like the people who complain... Want to hear something crazy? Want to hear something crazy? Like, yo, me and, my, me and my nephew were walking up the block to go donate some clothes yeah. into one of the yellow bins out here. Right, we throw the bin, we throw the clothes in the bin, and two, we find two boxes of of incredible vinyl, like Miles Davis, bitches grew, like you know, like um, I'm talking Diana Ross, I'm talking, I'm talking Curtis Mayfield, I'm talking the Beatles, Crosby, Stills and Nash, everything. Wow, like just phenomenal records, and I'm like, people just don't place value on <laughs> these things anymore because. You you're in a you're in a fast paced age of like information online. Yeah. And you lose like a lot of people lose sight of the like if you're not a collector or if you're not placing value in the things that are not considered quote unquote valuable to society now, then you lose sight of stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm talking about every single thing in this these these two boxes was of value. Wow, even the like the bitches brew record, you get certain prints of that lab that that record, they're worth a lot of money. Like you get certain. I know. I I was like, I don't understand how this record is here. Like, it's insane. Yeah, and it was just sitting there. Like, I'm I'm talking about like dumpster status. Oh my <laughs> god, yo! Like looking looking great, looking flawless. You know. That's a travesty. I I I you can't know, lie. If I would have seen know, it's the period we're in, we just. We wipe them down, you know, like we're we're we the state of affairs we're in. We wipe them down and we would get them move. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say if I seen that land and you know, I'm sorry whoever you know donated it, but I'm taking that. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm not I'm not letting that get mishandled. Donate it though. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy though, man. You know, and it's like a lot of people talk about how like it's just you know hip hop is in such a bad state, and they've been doing it for years. But it's like if you just look. You'll find good shit. It's all there. It's underground, but you just have to simply look. It's not that hard to look. It's easier than it's ever been. You know, that's how I came across, you know, the, the whole show-off movement when you guys were really, you know, when really coming together in the early stages. It's like, 
I was looking for right. something new. And I found you guys. You know what I mean? It's not hard to find. You just have to find it. But some people are rather just bitching and playing and be like, it's not like it used to be. You know what happened for me now? Like, my young king, uh, I have two young kings, uh, Josiah, he's, he's nine right now. Yeah. Uh, and I forget, he's um, 16 now. And the young queen's 19, about to be 20, like, right? So yeah. Isaiah is super into, uh, you know, hip-hop. He, like, likes a lot of trap. He likes a lot of, like, new wave kind of sound. Yeah. But what we do, which is cool, is that he'll put me on to stuff that he thinks I would like, and I put him on the stuff that I think he would like. And, you know, so he he just went through his whole... Because I never forced um, sounds on them. So, like, you know, very early on, I was like, you're going to be hip-hop children, that's it. You know, yeah. I'm hip-hop, so you're going to be hip-hop. You know, like, I didn't do any of that. I was like, yo, find, find your niche, find what you love. And so for a long time, they were listening to, like, I don't know what you call the, the music, electronic music, or whatever music goes with gaming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were like listening. They were listening to like the craziest sounding stuff to me, but that's what they loved, and I love it. You know. But uh, now, now I there, he like he just went through, um, you know, the whole discography of Trap Called Quest, the Trap Called Quest, right? Oh wow. Um, uh, and he just he he put me on consistently onto like the up and coming artists of the day, which is dope. You know, so like I found, um, I found dudes, um. Uh, from from uh, Dreamville and, and different different individuals to him, you know YB and Corday and like yeah. you know, just like really dope cats who like I think should be given like like a lot of love and attention nowadays, but um don't get the the recognition uh, because like there's this there's this you versus us kind of mentality between the older generation and the younger yeah it shouldn't exist you know. No, I agree with you completely, man. And it's and it's true. Like there there's a lot of dudes in this generation like who, you know, aren't taking the underground boom bap approach. They're taking, you know, the the new approach that the kids are doing, but they 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 are a representation of what, you know, the OGs like yourself and everybody else before them were doing, you know, like YBN Corday, great example, you know, JID another one like from Dreamville, like Absolutely. You, they they Absolutely. They they don't that's 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 all that matters. Dope is dope, you know. Yeah. Like and and allow allow the youth to be different. Like so, the older Rex would have like negated that and like been like, oh, you different or this, you don't fit into this certain kind of box of of, of skill set that I'm gonna judge you. Yeah. You know. And now through growth and like learning from other individuals around me and like learning how to respect you know our differences, I'm able to like fall back and be like, okay, I can rock with that. Or I can I can at least appreciate why other individuals do rock with it. Yeah. Even if I don't. Yeah. You know? Fact. Like um there are certain there are certain sounds that immediately get turned off in our home. <laughs> like there are still those. Yeah. We still we still do we still uh mute the mumble. You know what I'm saying? We mute the mumble. <laughs> we mute the nonsense. We mute the we mute the nonsensical music. But um if individuals are doing this new wave and it, it got a certain vibe that's not specific to the sound we grew up on, then we're not going to automatically be like, no, turn that off. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. hip-hop's always been that's about, um, it's always been about growth, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, and, and to me, I'm 30 years old, right? So I got into hip-hop late, but I went back and did my research because I fell in love with it, right? Yeah. So, you know, I like everything from fucking Rapper's Delight and fucking Grandmaster Flash and all the way up to, you know what I mean? The shit that's going on now, but, you know, um, around the time that I really got familiar with you guys and, like, what the show-off movement and stuff, like, you know, 2009, 2010-ish, I was in a period where I was sick of rap music like i was like all this shit is garbage like i couldn't stand all the rick rossi type beats and all the you know um just re repetitive sentence hooks and stuff and um it took me a few years after to just you know really look back and be like look like you know when i was 16 getting into epmd their music was 15 years old and did i did you know, did I think, you know, some of the nuances or maybe some of the, you know, Eric Sermon's rhymes are a little corny? Yeah, but I appreciate it for what it was because I knew the time it came out. And I was like, if I'm really a fan of hip-hop, I'm like, I got to appreciate the music coming out now for the same thing. Like, it, it constantly yeah, changes. That's a, that's a good observation. Yeah, like, it constantly changes. And if I can appreciate something for back then, for 
that was the norm back then or that was, you know, an in, uh, innovative sound back then, then I have to have the same respect for the young kids, you know, changing and shaping the culture a different way nowadays too, you know what I mean? It's like, because it's the same thing. It's the same thing, really. It's just, it, do, it sounds different, but, you know, all the... All the artists throughout hip hop history who, you know, have really revolutionized it did sound different. You know, that's what made them great. Exactly. Yeah, and and, and, and that's great that you put that out that like, like that because like, you know, we had our our artist artists with idiosyncrasies, we had our artists with different styles, who had simple styles, who had styles that weren't uh a, a typical of like, you know, the super lyricist, um, you know, uh who who gravitated towards more commercial sounds and stuff like that. You know what I mean? LL Cool J could do all things. You know what I'm saying? He could do, yeah. he could do super lyrical. He could be sitting on a record with Red and Mass, and then he could do something super, super for, for the club, or he could do something super for, like, you know, pop radio. So, um, the thing about our culture is our culture, like, you know, was just so in its infancy that we were learning kind of on the fly. Yeah. So, like, we... We have such a judgmental um, culture, and I think it's more gra uh, because the culture itself is wrapped up um, in, I mean, excuse me, the music itself is wrapped up inside the culture that we live. So it's not, not the same as like something where, you know, you can disconnect um, pop music from your everyday life. Yeah. Um, everyday life is, 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 is wrapped around hip hop. You know, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you sleep, the way you, like, the way you battle, the way you discuss, everything is hip-hop, you know? Hip-hop is just, it's a, a whole different animal uh, from all these other genres, you know? And that's not to, like, make light of other music, which I love. I love rock and roll, I love tone, I love R&B, and I love jazz, and I love uh, blues, you know? I'm not a fan of country music. I'm the same, <laughs> yeah, I'm the exact same, bro. I love all genres like of music country. except country. <laughs> but I know people can rock with country music and I'll let them do their thing. Yeah. But like, the genres that I do rock with, I understand like, you know, they have their like, beauty. But the beauty of hip hop is something so much different in my eyes and it always will be because it's so embedded in the lifestyle. Yeah. You know? The lifestyle itself, that's what makes hip hop so unique and different idiosyncratic and incredible you know and i'm always gonna love it for that yeah same man and that's what and i i think you're right too like that's that's kind of what makes hip-hop so revolutionary compared to other genres it's like and though the though the culture itself might not be the forefront of the music that's popular nowadays the, th the fact of the matter is it's really the only genre of music i can think of that was formed from a culture opposed to you know like, rock music, you, you had cultures kind of form around rock music, you know what I mean? But, like, rock wasn't necessarily yeah. born from a culture, you know what I mean? But, like, hip-hop was born from what was going on in the streets, you know what I mean? And it and it's kind of like you said, it was always kind of in its infant stages, continuously changing, thing, con continuously being innovated. Be, the closest thing could be, like, probably blues, sorry to cut you off, but, like, you know, blues... Blues is embedded in the heartache and pain of, like, the neighborhood. Right? Yeah. Um, so, like, you know, uh, the storyline, but, like, you know, when you say that, you know, blues in its simplicity is similar to a lot of the vibes of nowadays music. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In, in blues simplistic message and its simplistic riff and simplistic style is valid. They're all very similar. The same way nowadays modern uh, music is. I got my first, um, I had a conversation with Glasses Malone from Cali, and he was breaking down that kind of concept uh, in my crib uh, a while back. And he, he was breaking down, like, like you know, the sounds of, of blues and how you can, you, can, you, can, you can see a connect between blues and trap music, you know? Yeah. Like, the simplicity of both. Yeah, and it's true, because, like, blues kind of what, like, you know, with the blues, you're right, very simple, very direct. It didn't take, you know, you didn't have to be a scholar or a wordsmith to understand the message. It was very direct, easy to understand, and the the pain and the emotion was in in the voice. You know what I mean? Like, 
it was in its simplicity that that really made you feel it and relate to it. And now that you say that, that's a good point. Like, because a lot of these, you know, trap artists, a lot of it's through the melody and stuff. It's like the lyrics are simple, the beats might be simple, but but a lot of the the emotional connect is actually done through you know the melody of the the way these guys are like kind of humming and singing on the tracks. Uh, facts, because like you know, a lot of them, like yo, know, if you see them in, in, in performance. And you see them get into their bag, it's like, yo, wow, like, you know what I'm saying? You see the engagement of them and the crowd, and you see a, a certain energy flow, yeah. you know? And, like, though we may not be directly linked to it or connected to it because we, we from a, of a time of more, like, like from before, when, when we always talk about boom bap and a very specific sound, yeah. that energy, we can, we can, we can, um, we can understand and that energy can resonate with us if we just think back to like how it felt when we first, you know, felt how we felt when we, we dealt with hip hop for the first time. Yeah. Yeah, man, you know. Um yeah, hip hop's one of those things, man. It's a beautiful thing. Like I could, I can talk hip hop all day, every day. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I do want to uh, move forward to talk about a little bit more about the music. Um, because you got an upcoming album coming out as well right now. Uh, T H I N G S things. Absolutely, things. That's the hunger inside. Never get satisfied. I like how you do the. Uh, the acronyms, too, for a lot of the album titles. I like that uh, concept. Yeah, I, I needed to go back to the acronym. You know, I'm a fan of KRS-One, you know, and, like, that old that old styling of, like, you know, throwing the acronym out there and, and recognizing, um, recognizing that aspect of the culture, too. And so, like, you know, things, like, we all get so caught up in things, right? Yeah. And you either find things that, like, of value... Um, we place we place value on things that are like you know uh, to our detriment or to our you know progression and growth. So in this album, I try to uh, resonate with the people in a message of finding those things that truly matter outside of the materialistic things. And you know, one thing that resonated in my mind when I was when I was creating this album was. Uh, the concepts of like the great George Carlin when he did mm. uh, the stuff, you know, he did he did he did his his uh, his uh, piece on stuff. Like I was just continuously, I was like you know building up stuff. Yeah. We're, like we're like doing we're doing we're getting stuff to get more stuff. Yeah. And then this stuff like to the other stuff. So like you know, and like that dialogue just resonated so well with me because it's like it's a it's a never ending. Um, always relevant concept of how we as people hold on to hold on to non non essential non valuable items as if they are so essential and valuable. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact, man. And George Carlin was a genius, but you know, and that almost kind of it's in, it's in the same vein as like the person who no longer seen value in those records and threw them in that bin. You know what I mean? It's like. Like, um, but I love that. I love that idea, that concept. Um, and I love the rollout you've been doing for the project too. Like just the simple Instagram rollout like that you've been doing like prior to, but just every single thing you post, you find a way to make it fit into the things acronym. I just think that's genius. You know, I like, I love, I love that approach. That's super cool. My objective with social media is to not utilize it in the way that it's used, but to utilize it in the way I feel it should be you or yeah. what I'm trying to convey in to the people. So I don't need to be on consistently as long as my message remains consistent, you know? Yeah. And, and the, 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 the vibe of what individuals are looking for from me, I've always, I, I, well, excuse me, I haven't always, I have come to understand what I need to be to be the best me for individuals who are looking for what I, I deliver, Yeah. you know? Yeah, so, man. Yeah, and, and I appreciate you recognizing how I'm trying to do the rollout. And it, yeah, things things are coming, and it's it, it's a really it's a really well put together album. I believe, and I'm, I'm so excited for people to hear it. Um, it it's necessary. It, it's current. It, it's valuable to the discussion. Um, and anybody who anybody who's looking for something, substance. If anybody's looking for something, um. You know that's going to to 
to add add value to the dialogue of today than this album sports. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. Like, just the, you know, just the mentality behind it, the way, you know, like, and the and the pictures that you've selected to, to put up, too. Like, I just, I love the, I just love the whole idea of it. You know, it's just so artistic, the way that you've decided to convey it out. It's like, because, you know, at first, I didn't even realize, you know, it's your album title. I'm just, you know, I'm seeing you post stuff, and it's like, things. And then it's like, things. And I'm like, what's with the things? You know, so then it makes me look further into it, and then I, I, I come to realize, I'm like, this is the album title, and then I realize, you know, the album's acronym title that you had, and then I'm noticing in all the pictures, I'm like, this is so creative, man, this is so cool, but it, 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 it intrigues the mind, you know what I mean? It's like, well, 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 it's like, there's something going on here, what's this about, you know what I mean? And, and the content you've chose to, the, to post to along with it, like, you know, some of it's family, some of it's music related, like album covers, other things. Some of it is um, books, you know, which is another thing, you know, um, that I think not a lot of people really promote in today's society is the, the importance of reading books. But I just, I love the whole idea of the whole thing. So, like, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. What, like, uh, what? When uh, do you have? You don't have a release date specifically set for it yet, do you? you the thing. You're gonna be. You're gonna be one of the first people who, will, uh, because this conversation has gone the way it's gone. Yeah. I'm gonna give you the actual release date. Ah, okay? dope. So you're gonna be one of the first people who. And you actually are gonna be the first person who posts the actual release date. Say a word. Yeah. So the, the the actual release date is going to be June 19th, which is Juneteenth. That's our Independence Day. Yeah. Uh, for melanated individuals, anybody out there who knows about Juneteenth, that was the day that slavery ended, and that is going to be the release date of things. The hunger inside never gets satisfied. Wow. June 10th, 2020. Amazing, man. So people heard it, you know what I mean? June, yo, th that's dope, man. I appreciate you giving us the exclusive on that too, man. Yo, so we, yo, yo, when we say Juneteenth, you gotta say that. You gotta tell the people. Juneteenth. 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 Yeah, Juneteenth. We don't say June nineteenth. We say June Juneteenth. Right? You know, Juneteenth. That album dropping. The next album dropping is Juneteenth. Yeah. That's crazy, man. That's dope. Um, curious too. Like, are you able to tell us anything about the uh, album, like features or production or anything? Or are you keeping all that under wraps until you uh, put the no, product out? Like, I can let you know. We got um, we got production from Not. We got production from uh, Static Selector. That record is a phenomenal record with Farrell Bunch. Woo! Um, we, have, Woo. Uh, we have a we have a joint with uh, we got a couple joints with Marco Polo. Woo! Uh, uh, shout out Canada, Marco Polo's in the building. Yeah, shout out Canada with us. You got a representation. You know, uh, we got uh, Apollo Brown on there. We got uh, Evidence did a couple of things on there. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. So like, yo, it's always dope when I, I I link up with evidence. Um, and then we have uh, uh, we got a record, a real dope record with uh, Little Fame and Speaker Book Kane from from hometown. Oh um, shit! Benjamin Dead, and that's a phenomenal. Like that's gonna be one of the first ones rolled out. Uh, that joint and a joint by Apollo Brown called Ice's Daughter. Oh and, uh, man! So those are gonna be like the first two joints that come out. Uh, probably, probably within the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be dropping those two records right there: Ice's Daughter and Benjamin's Dead. Um, yeah. <laughs> dope, yeah, man. Like, it, it was a pretty dope album. And, and, and shout out to Drug Beast, who did a, a bunch of things on the sound bed. Uh, Drug Beast is a is a producer who uh, uh he's phenomenal. I got some stuff coming with him later on down the line, down the pipeline. Uh, a, a full EP. But like right now, he did like he did a he did a few things on on things, man. And, and, and everything we did together was just like such valuable work. Oh man, uh, that's yeah. that's dope. You got a stack yeah. lineup on there, like man. That's a super stack lineup on there, man. I can't wait to hear the project, man. Hello. Hello. Oh, sorry, sorry. I had a um. I had, Come, 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 come in. Yeah, so like, I'm sorry, we got family coming in. So like, oh, it's all good, man. You know what? The show's only an hour long, so um, I can let you go get doing what you're doing. 
Um, but you know, I'd love to have you back on the show again in the future if you're into it. You know, maybe even after the album drops and you can promote it again, you know, uh, once everything's out and stuff. Yes, I'm actually, I'm actually all for that. Let's make it happen. Okay, Please, dope. You know, it, was a, it was an incredible, an incredible um, time talk. Yeah, man, Rex, thank you very much for your time, man. I appreciate it very much. Look forward to getting you back on the show again in the future. You know, there's still so much, so much history to talk about with you. But um, before we let you go, man, let the people know everywhere they can find you online. I super appreciate you. So, like, before I even talk about the Rex thing, I got a label. It's called Bullies Music Group Incorporated. You can follow us on at Bullies Music Group Incorporated. Bullies is B-U-L-L-I-E-S, right? Yep. And then um, my personal handle is at Rex Hip Hop on, on Instagram or The Real Rex on Twitter. I don't really do too much else. You know, they're telling me I need to get a Snapchat. I'm not getting with it. They're telling me I need to, like, go back to Facebook. I'm not really getting with it unless I'm booking shows. Um, yeah, if you're looking to do features or booking for shows, um, you can hit up Wrecking Supreme, which is Ari King Supreme at gmail.com. Yeah, I appreciate you for coming to the time with me. It was a beautiful time. Yeah, man. You know, amazing conversation. I look forward uh, to having you on the show again, man, and chopping it, picking it up where we left off, my man. Bless up, man. That was beautiful, brother. Bless up, my G. Have a have a great evening, you know. Have a great night with your family. And, um, you know, stay safe while this virus shit's going on. You know, keep your, keep your loved ones around you. Make sure everyone's clean, everybody's safe. And, you know, um, like I said, man, can't wait for the album. And look forward to chopping up with you again, man. Yeah, 